All right, it is four o'clock. I will call the Planning Commission meeting to order. Uh, Alderperson Mitchell. Here. Ryan Sazma. Here. Jerry Jones. Here. Marilyn Montemayor. Here. Dave Hoffman. Here. John Matiska excused. For those in attendance, would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting? Yep, let's do that. <laughs> All right, motion by Marilyn, second by Jerry. Any discussion? No. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. Minutes are approved. All right, first we have a public hearing regarding the sub subtraction territory amendment to the tax incremental district TID 18. Chad or Steve? So we will talk about what we're doing in the uh, 3.2. So I don't know at this point if there's any public here. All right. Anyone wishing to be heard on this one? Anyone wishing to be heard? Anyone wishing to be heard? Seeing none, we'll close the hearing on that. 3.2, consideration and possible action approving the subtraction territory amendment in the tax incremental district 18 and approving the corresponding project plan. Chad? Thank you, Mayor. So um, I handed out to the committee members a map that shows um, one side of the map that doesn't have any color and is fairly large, shows the um, boundaries of the current tax incremental district 18, which was created for the development of the South Point Enterprise Campus on the south side of Sheboygan. Um, if you turn the map over on the sheet two of two, uh, there's a blow up of the subdivision that uh, the Stonebrook crossing subdivision that Warner Homes is building. And the green line on that map shows the previous TID boundary. So the TID, when it was originally created in 2018, was created to be the two parcels in that area. When they platted out the subdivision, the six parcels shown on that drawing that are in gray um, were split between part of the parcel being in the TID and part of the parcel not being in the TID. And the real property listener contacted us to say that we have to do something with those parcels because whole parcels need to either be in the TID or out of the TID. So the easiest process for us to follow was to subtract the parcels from the TID. So those six parcels will be taken out of the TID and just be on the general property tax liability, which for the taxing jurisdictions, including the city, will allow us to get revenues right away as part of the new home construction. So we need to have this adopted by the end of September. The council will take this action up next week and then we can have these uh, lines re redrawn to allow for uh, a little bit more clarity in how the real property lister and the city assessor assigns values to those parcels. Thanks, Chad. Questions for Chad at all? Is there a motion to accept? I make that motion. I'll second. Motion second. All right. All those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Thanks, Chad. All right. Next, we have an application for conditional use with exceptions by Priority One Investment LLC to install new murals on the north and south walls of Nikki's Next New, located at 1019 South A Street. Steve? Or Chad? So I'll start out by saying that I'll be the applicant on this one. The um, This is a similar to the murals that were approved last week, or last time you guys met for the uh, Dubois and the Peabody's. Um, this is on the Nikki's next to new uh, building for two murals. And Steve will go through his information as normal, but the uh, Danielle, who was part of it last week, was unable to come because of a family emergency. So I. I said that I would kind of handle it on her behalf. All right, so this is this is real similar to the murals that we had taken a look at at the last meeting at Du Bois and Peabody's. This, this time we're taking a look at uh, Nikki's Next to New, which is uh, just to the east of Fountain Park. They have two wall spaces that you are gonna be seeing on the photos. 
Um, again, we're talking about uh, the installation of two interactive 100 square foot murals on the northwest corner of the north wall and the southwest corner of the south wall. And again, the interactive mural is large scale public painting that pedestrians can interact with in some way. On the north wall, an individual would stand in front and put their hand on the wall, making it look like they're pushing the door open to another world. And on the south wall, an individual would stand in the black and white space. And the black and white design are very cartoon in nature, showing images of well-known objects and places um, that make Sheboygan unique. And if approved, they would be looking to start these and complete them possibly in September. And staff was, again, recommending approval of the conditional use permit. Is anyone in the audience? Questions from commissioners? Make a motion to approve as presented, subject to recommended. Second. Motion and second. Further comments? Seeing none. All those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. 3.4 application for conditional use with exceptions by Jason Labuvi to operate Harbor Cafe at 340 South Pier Drive. Steve? All right, thanks, Mayor. Um, we're taking a look at uh, 340 South Pier Drive. We have uh, Jason Lebouvier and uh, uh, the owner of the property, as well as uh, Sam Leroy uh, from Quashes. Sorry, Sam. Um, so what we're taking a look at, this is the riverfront shanty that is closest to the miniature golf course way on the east end of the river. And what we're uh, looking at today is Harbor Cafe will be an earthy, sophisticated, family-friendly, French-style hangout located at 340 South Pier. The proposed plan includes the construction of new interior build-out that converts the existing retail space into a new coffee cold sandwich shop. And the goal is to open Harbor Cafe on April 1st of 2022. The vision for the cafe is to combine the menu concepts of Starbucks and Panera Bread, but with an extremely welcoming atmosphere that gives patrons a place to congregate for endless periods of time without any pressure to consume or leave. And will, uh, the mission for Harbor Cafe is to give the citizens and visitors of our community access to the environment and views of one of the argu arguably one of the most em emblematic pieces of real estate in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, Harbor Cafe will be family friendly for patrons of all ages and will not serve alcohol. The menu will be simple and not require any fires or grills, beverages uh, such as water, flavored sparkling waters, coffees, espressos, teas, smoothies, and foods would include soups, salads, wraps, mini deli sandwiches, charcuterie boards featuring local cheeses and sausages, bakery, and specialty dessert. Uh, the, me the menu will source local and ingredients whenever possible, and the primary mission for the cafe is to provide patrons with a welcoming and comfortable environment to congregate. The decor can be summarized as earthy sophistication with a lot of natural building materials and a large Sheboygan mural to be painted by local artist Dale Knack. The current floor plan has indoor seating for approximately 60 patrons. Um, in addition, they're hoping to get the city's approval to build a deck on the Riverside building to create outdoor seating for our, uh, their patrons. The space at 340 was once occupied by Restoration Gardens, and they continue to do an amazing job of managing the landscaping. There's a beautiful garden area directly to the west of the building, and in the future, there is the possibility of using this space to create seasonally themed garden for people to walk through and enjoy, which would include patriotic themes for summer, tasteful harvest Halloween theme for fall, and sophisticated Christmas theme for winter. This would just be an added bonus, and perhaps they would have Salvation or uh, Army or Santa and Elves visit, visit a bit as well. Harbor Cafe will employ one to two full-time empl employees and six to eight uh, part-time employees, and initially the hours of operation would be from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday through Saturday. Um, applicant does mention the possibility of having some outdoor seating. We've discussed this a little bit. Um, in order to do that, there would need to be the encroachment, so they would work on that most likely uh, fall or spring and put with a potential for construction and utilize of that uh, next summer. And then we would just work with the applicant with regards to uh, signage, and the Harbor Cafe is a nice way of filling this uh, vacant South Beer tenant space. So staff was recommending approval of the conditional use permit subject to the conditions you have before you. I can answer any questions in the applicants are here. Gentlemen, any other additional comments you'd like to add or? All right. So. Come to the mic. 
Uh, no, I just, uh, I'm a Sheboygan native and uh, I'm excited about this property and committed to it. I have another full-time job um, and this is going to be kind of a hobby business, just uh, kind of paying it forward in the community. So it's uh, exciting. So Thank you. That's it. Comments from commissioners? Motions by commissioners? I make a motion to approve all of the staff recommendations. Second. Motion and second for their comments. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. All right. Application for conditional use with exceptions by Tony Rosick to operate Rosick Garage at 1019 North Water Street at the EBCO Venture Center Accessory Building located on the west side of the property along North Water Street, 1221 Erie Avenue. Steve? All right. Thanks, Mayor. We have uh, Tony Rosick here, who's looking to open uh, uh, Rosick's garage. Tim Ebenreiter, the owner of the facility, and uh, Richard Lindy, the architect who's helping Mr. Rosick and Ebenreiter with regards to uh, the project. So what we're taking a look at is, again, this is the large building that you see on the west side of the site, uh, presently vacant, and there's an opportunity for Mr. Rosick to come in and operate Rosick's garage. This would be uh, a, a car repair business, and the cars uh, would receive maintenance of engines, brakes, lights, no body work, just mechanical systems. About two-thirds of the work will be with businesses such as Budget Auto, and about a third of the work will be with uh, local individual customers. There would likely be two employees. Hours of operation would be Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The exterior of the building will remain unchanged, and site work uh, includes removal of uh, gravel areas and replacing them with concrete paved parking on the east of the existing drive and grass area on the west uh, side of the drive. So again, if you wouldn't mind, could you go to the picture that just kind of shows? So there's, you, you can see on the south side of the garage, there's just a little bit of gravel. And, and so that section that's on the west end is the area that they would be talking about uh, grassing up. And then the area that's gravel on the west side, closer to the or east side, closer to the other building you can see over there is gravel. And they would be looking to pave that. Um, it's staff's understanding that the applicant would be keeping their garbage inside the building. Um, and... Uh, as far as the time frame, the plan commission may want to ask uh, the applicant as far as uh, when they're looking to install the landscaping and paving. Right now, the uh, condition of approval does give the applicant a little bit of time to complete that, right? And it's condition number 16, and that one says June 10th of 2022, if everyone's okay with that and the applicant's okay with that. But other than that, staff was recommending approval of the project subject to the conditions you have before you. I can answer any questions, and the applicants are here. Questions for Steve? Gentlemen, any additional comments you'd like to add? No, we're set. <laughs> questions from commissioners? Ryan? Yeah, is that landscape date of 922 that Steve set uh, reasonable? The landscaping date? The, um, is the landscaping date of 922-22 reasonable to get all the landscaping done around the building? June, June 22nd. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. sorry, June, yeah. Okay. Additional comments from commissioners? Motions by commissioners? Make a motion to approve subject to recommendation. Second. Motion, second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. All right. 3.6 General Ordinance Number 22-21-22 by Older Persons Feldy and Mitchell, annexing territory owned by the City of Sheboygan, owned by the City to the City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Chad? Thank you, Mayor. So we're looking at a property. If, so on, your, on the drawing, you can see... Um, on the screen, you can see the, the property. So the city purchased this property back in August of this year. Um, it's a roughly six to seven acre parcel completely surrounded by the South Point Enterprise campus. Um, so now that it's city owned, uh, we would like to annex it into the city 
um, and then it'll ultimately be tagged onto the industrial park. But um, as it part of the annexation process, if it's unilaterally owned by the city, uh, we can just do it. Um, and we'll assign uh, suburban industrial zoning to that parcel, which is consistent to the zoning of the business park. So since this property was on the market, um, we decided that it made sense for us to own it because once we developed this into an industrial park, we wouldn't want a single family house to have to deal with whatever the industrial <laughs> use is around it. So it made the most sense for us and we're happy to own it and be able to now annex it. Questions, motion? Motion approved. Second. It's been a motion and second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Next meeting, September 28th. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. We're adjourned. All right. Thank you.